Alex, where you look, governments, big business, and any other institution seeking to exercise power, the key to control is secrecy. You know, meetings such as uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, G8, or we should say G7, Russia is no longer a member, World Trade Organization, World Economic Forum, Central Banks, European Union Council of Ministers, European Commissioners, European Union Summits, uh, government cabinet meetings, numerous think tanks, foundations, you know, they're always conducted behind closed doors. And the only possible reason for this is that they, you know, the, the, the powerful people don't want us to know what they're discussing. Now, and of course, beyond this common reluctance to actually reveal the proceedings of meetings, the secrecy principle extends to the forums and meetings themselves. By and large, we don't even know most of these meetings take place. You know, you mentioned Jim Tucker earlier. Well, he's been doing it, you know, God bless his soul, for uh, since the 19, early 1970s, I believe. And before that, it was... Uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, the the publication he was working for before I can't remember Spotlight. You know they were covering that. You know what I mean. And then I joined in 1995. And needless to say, when I found out that this organization called the Build or something or other, you know, back in 1992, when I heard it from someone who actually had something to do with it, I laughed in his face because I thought this is impossible. Well, needless to say, it is possible because again, by and large. We, the people, don't even know most of these meetings actually take place. You have the World Economic Forum in Davos in January, late January, February. You have the Bilderberg and G7 meetings April, May. You have the International Monetary Fund World Bank annual conferences in September. And then you have the Trilateral Commission meetings, you know, uh, three times a year. You know, one meeting in uh, January or February takes place for the Americas. Then you have April, May, uh, or March, April, you know, for Europe, and then September, October, you have uh, the Trilateral Commission. Asia takes place, then they have their annual meeting. Council on Foreign Relations, they have their, you know, uh, quarterly seminars. You know, it's a kind of invisible international consensus emerges, and it carried over from one meeting to the next, but no one is really leading, and that's something that people have to understand. You know, um, Bilderberg is not some kind of a wacky conspiracy. We have these, you know, four old geezers sitting in a dark room, you know, under ground, holding hands, staring at a crystal ball, planning the world's domination, pressing buttons, and making the world go around. The world is a very complex place. No one is really leading this meeting. It works on the concept of consensus. And this consensus becomes the background, for example, uh, for the G8 or G7 economic communiques, it becomes what, you know, uh, it forms the International Monetary Fund when it imposes an adjustment program on countries in the third world. And it also becomes what the United States president proposes to Congress. And needless to say, it very much front and center for European elections, for the European key talking points, you know, for the agenda items, which then, you know, are passed on to national governments ac across Europe. And this is how it works. It's done through consensus. And again, you don't need to control every element of every corporation. You just need to control key levers of power, which is why the people who attend Bilderberg conferences are the movers and shakers of the world politics and economy. You have all the sitting presidents of European nations and Canada usually attend, as I said, sitting president of the United States never comes to these meetings, but he's well represented by his minions. You have, you know, key 50, 60 CEOs of the world's most powerful corporations from the Western world. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, Amazon, we're talking about uh, corporations such as uh, uh, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Glaxo, Smith, Klein, Beecham, from, you know, every walk of life is IBM, needless to say, top corporate uh, leaders are there. You're talking about key members of the world press, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, The Economist, uh, CNN, uh, they're, they're all there, Le Monde from France, uh, a group of priests from Spain, you have uh, Financial Times is there, all of these individuals, they attend on the condition that what is said is not reported in the mainstream press because they're part of this juggernaut. So you have, you know, the key politicians, you have key ministers, key commissioners, you have the president of the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, uh, Federal Reserve Board, you have the, the chairman of the European Central Bank. So amongst these people, again, no one tells anybody what to do, but the consensus reached at these meetings go a long way in defining and deciding world policy. That's right. When we come back in the long segment, I want to break down some of the history of it and then what's going forward, how they try to plan to block nationalist movements that I know they see as the main threat with Daniel Esselin. And I'm going to add and augment uh, what you've just said that I totally agree with, that it's a consensus synergy where you're invited because you already agree on the global governance worldview.
to be run by autocrats and corporations. So we're going to talk about that on the other side. There's a consensus because all they're doing is fine-tuning a program launched 100 years ago. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. This is Scottish John for Infowars.com. I know that most of you here in this commercial already know about the New World Order, eugenics, and all the other issues covered here at Infowars. The question is, do your friends and family know? If not, then I want to know why. Oh, I know it's tough to talk about this with some people. They might call you names, or they just want to talk about sports or soap operas. I say, so what? There's a battle going on out there right now. The ammunition is information, and the soldiers are you. It's time to transform your game from passive listening to active participant. We from Scotland have had our skin in this game for the greater part of the last thousand years. And I'm still fighting. If we don't all stand up right now, we're going to lose everything. The Info War is worldwide. Tell your friends about Info Wars and let them know that Info Wars doesn't print bull. It's real journalism and news backed up by documented fact. Step up and take your friends and family to Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv and PlanetInfowars.com. The truth will set them free. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape, but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. The Alex Jones Show. Because there is a war on for your mind. Back in 2004, already 10 years ago, David Rockefeller wrote memoirs. And in it, he admits the whole plan for a private corporate planetary government. On page 244, we'll put the quote up on screen. He admits that there is a plan to create uh, a world government. He also praised when Mao Zedong died in the 70s, uh, how wonderful Mao Zedong was in communism. Some even believe we're part of a secret cabal working against the best interest of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty and I am proud of it. The issue is they want to give us less for more and they're exempt. 
The new world order means you can't have a car or air conditioning and they're going to suppress new technology that's clean. That's what Obama told Africans. These are horrible people that have a very anti-human mission and who openly say across the board that it's the end of humanity as we know it and it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to merge with machines and that's just the way it is. In fact, we sell the book that's already a bestseller, Daniel Eslin's new book that breaks all of this down, Trans Evolution, The Age of Human Deconstruction at InfoWarsStore.com. You should get it and support him and support us. And he uses, you know, basically their own admissions in here to break down the plan. And, and this is foregone conclusion in their writings. I talk a lot about eco-science written in 74 by the White House science czar, John P. Holdren, along with Paul R. Ehrlich. They talk about that in there, but now they're doing it. I mean, it's their world. They have steered Western genius to build the Internet, but to make it all a control grid. They have woven together all the different corporate systems to build the ultimate team to bring this in so that they and their progeny gained the golden fields where mortals become immortal of Elysium. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not quoting from the new movie Elysium. I'm quoting from what Elysium is in Greek culture and in Greek religion, ancient Greek religion, the globalists follow Plato. They believe that they are ascending. And I want you to talk about their real agenda, Daniel, and if you agree with what I just said, and is there any way to stop these people at this time? Because their agenda is behind schedule in some ways. Um, it's, a, it's a very uh, interesting point. Uh, I was listening to what you're saying, Alex. Uh, before the break, you talked about uh, you know, the whole idea of, of countries, nation states, as opposed to uh, you know, this pan-global dictatorship, which is basically what they're creating. Um, and they call it one world company limited corporations with a lot more power than any government on the planet. And this go back goes back to 1968 to the Bilderberg meeting in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, where George Ball, under Secretary for Economic Affairs, with JFK and Lyndon Johnson, talked about this as one of the key discussion points at that conference almost 45 years ago, more than 45 years ago. And today, that we're seeing the uh, their plans for this uh, um, uh, pan uh, world company limited where corporations have a lot more power than than sitting president or sitting prime ministers is becoming reality and it's it's a scary thing if you actually realize that they proposed this as an objective 45 years ago now the whole point of na national system of nation states as opposed to uh the pan world system obviously has to do with uh, with the way they understand how money works. Now, the world today is run by monetary systems, not by national credit systems. And if you're smart, you don't want a monetary system to run the world. You want a sovereign nation state to have their own credit system, which is the system of their currency. Above all, it's the possibility of productive, non-inflationary credit created by the state, which is firmly stated in the United States Constitution. And needless to say, it was excluded by the Maastricht Treaty uh, um, uh, as a method of, of determining of economic and financial policy. Now, in Europe, this cannot be done because in Europe, governments are subject to control by private banking interests called independent banking systems. And these institutions have the power to regulate governments and to dictate terms to governments. And you think about you know this institution within the European edifice called the European Central Bank. Well, it tries to function like European independent central bank, which has no government. There's no government. There's no nation. It's a group of nations run by a private bank. And it's insanity to belong to this group, which is something that a lot of uh, people, millions of people, tens of millions of people across Europe are beginning to realize. It is insane to belong to the European Union. It is insane to belong to anything other than nation states. This supposed independence of the central bank is the decisive control mechanism for private financial interests, which historically in Europe have been installed as an authoritative instrument against an economic policy of sovereign governments uh, oriented towards the general welfare. And, you know, uh, European banking, it's a remnant of a feudal society in which private interests, as typified by the ancient Venetian cartels, you know, I've talked about this before, Venetian black nobility, of the Lombard League, which went down in the Dark Age in the 14th century. And this is something that these people have tried to resuscitate so many times over. And again, they're destroying or trying to destroy every nation state in the world, countries, and create this power 
bad world economic order, which they want to call world company limited at the expense of nation states.